believe that. Can you believe it? David, I am sure that there is a perfectly good explanation for this. Oh, I know the explanation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kids Clubhouse. We are so glad you guys are here. And this is the place where we come to learn, and we learn about God's great big story, okay? And how we can use that story in our lives. So, uh, you know what? I'm out of here. David, David, wait. Uh, where are you going? He parked in my parking space. My space? Who parked in what parking space? Passerton, the guy that should know better. Maybe it was an accident. No, 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 no. I refuse to believe it. I think he's failing us as a leader. And just one, this is just one instance. He's obviously turned to the dark side. David, you're being silly. Oh, really? Well, I'd like to show you this list of grievances against him that I complied with the course of three months and still, if you feel like being silly. Sorry, guys. Hold on a minute. He's always nice to everyone. A sure sign if he's hiding something. Or maybe he's just a nice guy. Um, his sermons are longer than longer than 13 minutes. Really? No one can pay attention longer than five minutes. <sighs> David, you're kidding. What? Oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Uh, David, none of these are good reasons to call him a bad leader. You're kidding, right? Uh, no, David. Um, you know. He stole my parking space. First of all, when did you get a parking space? Like, I don't have a parking space. And anyhow, maybe we should, like, give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was just running late. Aha! Another strike against him. David, you run late. Yeah. And uh, even if you disagree with him, uh, don't you think that being unfit because of these silly reasons here? Silly? Yes, yeah, silly. He's our pastor. I believe, like all people in charge, that he was placed here by God. So even if you do disagree with him, you should do it respectfully. Hey, let me share this month's life application with you and see uh, if that won't help. Guys, on the count of three, let's reveal this month's life application. Ready? One, two, three. Respect. Showing others they are important by what you say and do. Can you girls sit up with me? It's right here. Respect. Showing others they are important by what you say and do. Right. Um, so you should respect others? Yeah, even if they're, you know, by showing them, uh, you know, we can let God respect them. Even if he's always nice? Yes, absolutely. Well, I'll try. But if I see him in the hallway, I am making no promises that I will point my finger at that pastoral face and say, Shame! Shame on you, Pastor! What type of leader do you think you are? You think... He's standing right behind me, isn't he? Yes. Oh, hi, David. I just thought I'd stop by and apologize for taking your parking space this morning. I was running a little, little late. I was kind of in a hurry, and I just kind of took... What I could, when I could. Uh, and, and actually, I didn't know we had designated parking spaces even. So I, I'll do better next time. Oh well, it's up. Uh, it, it's it's fine. Well, I I understand. We all we all make mistakes. Well, well, thank you. You know what? I am so proud of you. See, there was a perfectly rational explanation. And he went out of his way to come all the way here to Kids Clubhouse and apologize. So what do you have to say about his leadership now? I think I better call, call off the tow truck. Yeah, probably a good idea. And I think we better see what's going on in the clubhouse. Come on, guys. <coughs> well, those are quite a few more boxes than I expected. How many people here? Then you do have to pack all these boxes and stuff. Oh, there is some, some all those envelopes with, with flyers. Uh, well, Mrs. F asked if I could pick up a bunch of, uh, help us of PTA mail out. Yeah. PTA I didn't think this happens. was going to be this big of a deal. Vinny, do you know what the repeated folding and 
sealing of no medical friendly letters does to your fingertips? No. It forms calluses, Vinny. And Vinny, calluses are those unsightly build up a skin and tissue on the tips of your fingertips. They give you man hands, Vinny. And man hands, Vinny, I hate girls' hands. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, Gwen, but if I think they, uh, uh, this is all, we, I think we, of all the things that Mrs. F has done for us, uh, I think we could do this one thing, because she's always been there for us, and we could do this one time. Ugh, I hate when I write. Say goodbye to my green thumbs. Well, that's a lot. Uh, Isn't Marshall so, supposed to be coming to help us out? Well, uh... Yeah, but he, s he said something about, something about fighting a good fight. Lads and lasses, no need to fear, for Marshall is here. Uh, yeah. yeah hey, Marshall, glad you're here. Could you come help us? Aye, I can, lass. What would you have me do, friends? Well, um, uh, Why are you wearing war paint? Or makeup? It's war paint. It is war paint. Okay. Okay. Oops. Okay. I would... Well, I would like you to take these and put them in stacks of ten. This box. These are all stacks of ten. Okay, and that would be, yes, that would be great. Mm -hmm. You know? You know what? What? She forgot stamps. Uh. You know what, guys? I'm just going to run down to the Quickie Mart and go get some. Cool. You guys want to? Go with me. Sure. Laddie, I will travel with you to the end. It's just down the street. To the Quickie Mart! <laughs> no, I can't wait to see Mrs. F's face when we, we still wonder how much we're helping her out. Oh! oh. It wasn't me. Oh! I didn't do it. Oh! Um. Oh! Uh. Oh! Hey, Mrs. F. Oh! Please, Manny, don't you? Oh! Are you okay? No. Do I sound like I'm okay? No. Oh. Um. No. I'm not okay. What? What are you guys doing? Um. Well, we were about to just run out and grab some some stuff. You're run out. You're you're leaving. But um. these have to go out today. They have to go in the middle of the day. And oh. And I have an emergency dental appointment. We're, we're not leaving. We... No. I should know better than to trust Gordo's friends for help. But Mrs. F. No. Any excuses? I really needed your help today. Oh. Oh, I've got to go. Oh. Well. Oreos don't spell. Uh, wow. That was an interesting. Wow. Well, nothing. She, see the way she talked to us? <coughs> Mar Marshall, she just... <coughs> she was rude. And considerate. Angry, even. And for what? Because we chose to be here? Because we chose to help her? Because we chose to give up our days so that one day we could sit back and say that we helped Mrs. F in her time of need? Yeah! <sighs> but that time is now over. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. She, she was... Inconsiderate. She's not worthy of our time. She's not worthy of our help. Ah, she's, she's, she's not worthy of us. And we'll not take one more second of it. We will not stand for it. No! So what do we do about that? Uh, we shall leave. We shall leave her to her thousands of boxes of envelopes. Yes, we should. All right, up we go. A vast. But, but wait, wait. She, she wasn't herself. Vinny, you saw how she treated you. And treated us. We're not going to take any more of this. Are you coming? Hey, guys. This is my favorite part of Kids Clubhouse. Because this is a part where we get to look inside God's Word and see what God has to say about our virtue or our life application. Uh, this month we're talking about what? Respect. Is that what we did earlier? We talked about respect. 
Yes. And our spiral story today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 22. And have either one of you ever heard of David? Y'all ever heard of David? In the Bible? You know, the guy who like slew Goliath? And you remember that story? You don't remember that story? Okay, well, our story today is about David and how David and Saul and use the word respect. So here we go. Um, David was loved by like a whole, whole, whole lot of people. And, but there was one person, King Saul, who hated him. And so, because King Saul was jealous of David. And King Saul became so jealous and enraged by his popularity that he decided that he was going to have David killed. That's not a good thing, is it? No. So King Saul gathered like 3,000 men to follow him to pursue David. And meanwhile, David had managed to gather like 600 men to travel with him. Yes, he had 600 men. And David, and this, does that sound like, like if you had 3,000 and you had 600, who do you think was going to win? The 3,000 probably sounds like it would win, doesn't it? Okay? But David and his men went in hiding from King Saul and his 3,000 men in the desert. And once they were there, they found a cave that they could all fit in and they hid, hoping that King Saul would not find them. Okay? However, King, Saul meant, King Saul's men ended up stopping right next to the cave where David and his men were hiding. What do you think David would think? Think he'd be scared? Would you all be scared if you were trying to hide from somebody? And then they were right outside the cave? You wouldn't be scared? I'd probably be terrified because I would be like, what? He's going to come in here and he's going to find us. So, but anyhow, King Saul, I mean, yeah, King Saul, so he was right outside there, okay? <coughs> And as King Saul went about his duties, he was unaware that David and his men were hiding in the cave. And David's men urged him to take King Saul's life while they had a chance. So David's men wanted David to like sneak out of the cave and kill King Saul. Okay? But David thought differently. David refused to hurt King Saul at all. A man who God chose to be the king of Israel, and he knew in his heart that he should not kill him. So he cut a piece of Saul's robe off. That's all he did. Is he snuck out in the night and he just cut just like this little piece of his robe off. And King Saul left the cave but was unaware that he had been so close to death until David showed himself. Would you go out just right there in front of King Saul? What do you think? you think that would be a good thing to do? Probably not. David said, King Saul, King Saul, it's David. And I was in the cave, and I could have killed you, but I did not give in to the urges of all my men to do that. And I would not hurt who God chose to be the king. Therefore, I pray that God will rescue me from your hand so that I, David, will live. And upon hearing this, Saul started crying. And, Saul, and then King Saul said, David was not harmed, and king, the king returned to his kingdom. Isn't that pretty cool? He was there with 3,000 men, and King Saul could have killed him. And actually, David could have like slipped out of the cave and killed King Saul, couldn't he? Yeah, but instead he just cut off a piece of his robe so that when David talked to King Saul, King Saul knew that David had spared his life, and he just went back to his kingdom and didn't hurt David. Isn't that a pretty cool story? Yeah. And you know what? That's just what God wants us to do. God puts people in charge of us. Can you all think of people that God puts in charge of you? Who are people that God puts in charge of you? Yes. Your parents, okay? Who else does God put in charge of you? Your family. Okay. Like older, like your grandparents and your parents and stuff. What about your teachers? Do you think God put your teachers in charge of you? When you're at school. Yeah, when you're at school, she does, he does, doesn't he? What? And the principal, okay? 
And then we have other people like the governor and the president and those kinds of and the police and those kind of people too, right? Yeah. And God puts all those people in charge of us. And sometimes do we not agree with what they say? Do we ever not agree with our parents? Yeah, all the time, right? Yeah. Do we ever not agree with our teachers? Huh? I know the kids in my class at school, they probably don't agree with me all the time. When I tell them they have to work quietly so they don't disturb other people, and they're like, but I just was talking to my friend, okay? Yeah. So I know that my kids in my class probably don't think that I'm, that they don't agree with me all the time, okay? But you know what? When you don't agree with your parents, or just like Vinny found out, are you supposed to have respect for your pastor? Yeah, you are, okay? And so God put all those people in charge of us, okay? And we're supposed to, we don't have to, we don't have to agree with those people all the time. But do you know what? God wants us to show respect and to talk to them with respect, okay? Can we remember to do that? So we got to think about that this week. Whenever you don't agree with your parents or you don't agree with your teacher or something somebody tells you to do, then we need to make sure that we show respect for them, okay, even if we don't agree with them. Let's pray, and then we're going to see what happens with Miss F. I think she has a toothache. What do you think? You don't think she has a toothache? It seems to me like she did. Do you think it's her jaw? Okay. Well, let's find out what happens with her, okay? Let's pray. Jesus, we just thank you so much for who you are. And we thank you for these people that you put in charge of us. We ask you to just help us to pray for them and to just show them respect even when we don't agree with them. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Let's see what's going on in the clubhouse. Let me walk you to your car. Well, 
I think I can get myself to the car, Benny. Hey, when Marshall's in war paint and a kill, you don't know what he's going to do. Good, good point. Then he told me the whole story. Now I, for one, can respect a man who doesn't deserve his leader. Like me. Yeah, even I know that people have bad days, even new leaders. Well, I sure had a bad day today. And I appreciate you guys. I know what it feels like to be respected, even when you don't deserve it. Come on. Our little star dancers up here.